Hi, folks. This is Daniela Camboni, and welcome back to StansberryInvestor.com. Before we start today's segment, though, I want to just share with you a report that Stansberry Research has put out that I highly recommend you check out. With most investors going about life investing and retirement planning as if nothing unusual has happened to our financial system, not realizing the repercussions of the 11 trillion that's been pumped into the US financial system in the past 18 months alone, it's particularly a good read at this moment in time. At least four billionaires have stated publicly that Americans aren't paying enough attention to this development. And now a former Goldman Sachs banker says sooner than most people think, millions of Americans will potentially be pushed down out of the middle class, out of private retirement, and out of a decent life based on independence and privacy into a collectivist nightmare he calls financial lockdown. So find out how to protect yourself, your money, and your family with a free copy of his new report. In it, he'll show you the four steps he recommends you take immediately. You simply have to go to www.wakeupcall2021.com to get a free copy of this report. Again, it's www.wakeupcall2021.com. Get your free report today. It's a great read. All right, that said, welcome back to stansberryinvestor.com. Well, with Thanksgiving uh, behind us now, we are in full holiday swing and uh, many of you folks at home might be thinking about adding some precious metals to your portfolio or perhaps gifting some metals to your loved ones. So I brought back our go-to source uh, when it comes to uh, physical. Uh, please welcome back to the show, Mark Yaxley, Managing Director over at Strategic Wealth Preservation. They are a bullion provider and a storage provider uh, based out of the Cayman Islands. Uh, Mark, uh, always, always happy to speak with you. Welcome back. Especially now, Daniela heading into the holiday season. It's great to be back with you. Exactly. I thought, let's let's talk a little bit holiday here. Let's get us into the swing of things. A lot of things I want to address with you. Um, the swings, the volatility we've been seeing in, in gold and silver. I want to talk uh, palladium, platinum. Are they the forgotten metals? And then we will get in to your gift guide, your top coins, if you're a beginner, if you're an intermediate, or if you're an advanced buyer. So first, let's get your take Mark Yaxley, on the swings and sensitivity that we're seeing on the gold and silver market here. Yeah, definitely a little bit disappointing, Daniela, for precious metal investors. We were all getting excited when we saw the price of gold uh, achieve uh, 1875 recently. It had a, a strong run uh, from the, basically from the end of October uh, through most of November. Silver was up over $25 for the first time in a while. So we were all getting pretty excited about that. And then you know, a pretty strong pullback uh, over the last few trading sessions. Uh, there's been a, a few factors. Number one, some profit taking, obviously, from investors. Uh, Powell being uh, tapped for a second term uh, as, as chairman of the Federal Reserve seems to have been negative news for precious metals. But I think really the underlying uh, storyline here is the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar index is at its highest since June of 2020. So that's a 17-month high for the U.S. dollar, and that's putting downward pressure on uh, on physical well on all precious metals right now that's right that's right but we you know our folks at home can take advantage of this volatility though right there's always a silver lining that is exactly right that's it's it's the christmas special uh take advantage of these dips to be added to your positions that's really the wise thing to be doing and and i can tell you a little bit of uh, good news here daniela is demand for physical metal is actually at about a six month high right now. Uh, at least here at SWP, we're speaking to our industry colleagues are seeing the same thing. So a lot of people are taking advantage of the dip and adding into positions. And there is some fairly strong support, at least on the physical side uh, for precious metal buying right now. Oh, interesting insights. And what about platinum and, and palladium? I mean, we've seen the run up in, in palladium, I mean, down since it's highs, but trading um, higher than gold here. So this ties into the concept of diversity. Uh, one of the reasons that you're going to want to add precious metals to your overall investment portfolio is because it's a, a true diversifier against other assets that you might have. And the same logic uh, is also true when it comes to the precious metals themselves. You have the option of gold, silver, and the platinum group metals, which consists of platinum, palladium, and rhodium. And those metals in particular, the platinum group metals, have completely different market conditions than gold and silver. They're basically industrial Industrial metals used uh, primarily in the production of catalytic converters. So the auto industry is consuming a lot of the platinum group metals. And if you look at palladium since late 2018 through 2019 and 2020, it went, it totally 
outperformed gold and silver. It took off on a very strong run. It, it was close to $3,000 an ounce at one point. Now it has come back uh, along with uh, the, the precious metals in general at this point. But the point being that if you want to diversify your portfolio even further, you should consider palladium, I think, uh, as an alternative. Interesting. Okay. And um, well, we'll get to your favorite, favorite coins now. Um, because I said, it depends on where you, you're at in your game, right? Maybe there's a lot of beginners watching or intermediates or advanced. Are there certain products that uh, bode better to each category here? I think definitely. There's a lot of things to think about when it comes to time to investing in precious metals. I'd say at a high level, you need to, first of all, determine what your budget is, obviously, for the investment. And that can be a very simple exercise. Take the total value of your investment portfolio and, and just take a simple percentage of that, uh, that total amount and dedicate that towards precious metals. So that's kind of step one is determining the budget with which you want to invest. Then you're going to get into uh, the, you know, what we just touched on earlier, the decision to invest only in gold, or are you going to diversify amongst the different precious metals? You know, if you were only going to buy one precious metal, gold would probably be the cornerstone of, you know, kind of your, your allocation. Uh, it has outperformed silver in the long run and, and tends to really be the leader um, long-term uh, in, you know, amongst the precious metals, but we recommend that people do diversify. Silver obviously is a great option. It is though you need to be aware more volatile, both in an up market and in a down market. So if you look at 2020, for example, when gold was up 37% during the peak of the COVID, uh, you know, COVID kind of uh, taking just taking the best out of all of us and really running rampant. Uh, gold was up 37% during that time. Silver, though, on the other hand, was up 80%. So it's kind of a 2x factor for the performance of silver. But the same is true on the downside. When gold started to cool off in the fall of 2020, silver fell about twice as fast as gold. So that's something to be aware of. We've touched on palladium and the, the platinum group metals as well. Um, and then you, you get into the bars and coins. That gets a little bit closer to your question. But another thing that you have to think about as an investor is what is the best format for me? We've talked about this before. Obviously, bars do carry lower premiums and the larger bars in particular have lower total spreads. So the, the total of the cost to acquire the product and the cost to sell the product, that's considered your total spread. Right. The larger bars will be more advantageous for you, but you need to think, and this is the often forgotten question amongst investors, what is my exit strategy? Am I willing to sell all my, my single unit large bars when it comes time to get out of the investment or should I own smaller formats. So that gets us a little bit closer. You have to answer these questions before you really get down to the, the products. And storage, right? You, you guys are obviously a storage provider based uh, in the Cayman Islands, but you know, the question I get often as well, you know, I, or the comment I get here a lot is, well, I like being in an ETF or unallocated because I don't want the burden of having the metals at home or having to have it offshore. What's your, what's your response to that? Yeah, my response has always been the same. I think that there, there is a time and place for ETFs. I think there's a time and place for mining stocks. And, and I think there's a place for physical precious metals. Specifically with ETFs versus physical, personally, I use ETFs or funds when I'm, I'm entering the market for a short-term, more speculative investment in precious metals. It gives me quick and cost-effective exposure to precious metals. Uh, but there is some downside. I can't take delivery, for example, of my property. Uh, it's not a purchase of personal property. It's, it, it's really you're just buying exposure to the underlying asset, where as with physical, you actually are the owner of the physical property. There's no third party involved, no third party risk that goes along with that transaction. So that's probably better for people that are thinking mid to, to long term. And the additional costs that you, uh, you, know, you have to acquire the physical metals are basically offset by the management fees that you're paying through an ETF over the long long run as well. Yeah, if I can just pick your brain on that, I find that interesting because I get the silver ETF play when you're saying you want to get in and out, but gold, which, you know, tends to be a longer term play, um, you know, is there really a specific situation where you'd want to get in and out that, that fast? Yeah, I, I really don't think precious metals were ever intended to be, uh, you know, for day trading. Um, exactly. They have a very long history Right. In our culture and the role that they play in, 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 in security and, and really as wealth insurance in a portfolio. 
So I, I really don't think they fit. It's like trying to, to put a, a, a square peg into a round hole, really You're trying to, right. to make precious right. metal something that you can day trade. Now, right. not to say that professional traders can't do it, but I think for retail investors, it wouldn't be the most advisable way or position for precious metals. Right. For us normal folks. For um, us normal folks, let's, let's think mid to long term uh, and yeah. let's focus uh, uh, on simplicity and understanding what we're buying most importantly. All right, let's get to my favorite part of the show. Why do I love top coins so much? It just <laughs> gives me such happiness. Um, okay, your top coins right now, can you share your, your insights and inside tips for our audience? Well, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say inside tips. I've got a few on the list that you guys might not yet know about, but there are a few kind of common coins. And, and the reason that I, I start with these ones, the best sellers is really because they meet the brand reputation requirement. You know, I always tell people go out and buy products that are reputable, that are produced by recognized mints and refineries, because that gives you better liquidity when it comes time to sell the investment. But you're also looking for products at the same time that have that those those uh, lower premiums or competitive spreads. So when you factor those things in together, I often come up with, and I've said this before, the one ounce gold maple leaves, the one ounce silver maples produced by the Royal Canadian Mint. They are, you know, a beautiful product to own and they really check all of those boxes. So if you're thinking of giving yourself something for Christmas or someone you love, think about the one ounce gold and silver maple leaves. If you're an American, I, you know, best-selling coin in the world, uh, one ounce silver eagles, again, a very strong coin. I'm sure that you'd love to receive a tube of those for Christmas uh, or, you know, again, gift those to someone that you like. But something that we're seeing, Daniela, that, yep. you know, people uh, tend to give a lot at Christmas time are the smaller fractional gold coins. So like a, a quarter ounce gold eagle or a tenth ounce gold eagle, you know, for kids, for grandkids, kind of start building up their stack slowly. It's like a 250 to $500 price point for those coins. So that could be interesting as a gift. Um, if you're looking for something attractive, you know, you know, so, yeah, I know a lot of women who like to receive gold bars for Christmas as well. Uh, it's not only guys that are that are attracted, like you said, you love to talk about this stuff. The Pam Suisse Lady Fortuna bar is probably the most attractive. You've seen it in our vault in Cayman. It's probably the most attractive product on the market in terms of a bar. It's got a beautiful picture of Lady Fortuna, uh, the goddess of, of good fortune. Uh, on it. So that's a good option. And it also comes with a little bit of a lower premium than some of the gold coins. If you want to go more on the exotic side, you can check out the Cayman Islands, you know, uh, silver and gold Marlin coins. These aren't as well known in some parts of the world. They're, they're exclusive uh, bullion coin of the Cayman Islands. So if you wanted to surprise someone, you could go there. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. I think I got my husband one of those uh, in the past. Um, and do you have anything you could show us? I do. I do. This is my uh, my personal favorite, probably. Uh -huh. Actually, I should say my wife's personal favorite. I have gifted this a few times. This is a kilo uh, silver uh, koala from the Perth Mint in Australia. And what's interesting about this coin is how thick it is. It's uh, just so impressive to kind of hold on to. And it really has a lot of weight to it, not to mention a very beautiful design. So this is a, a gift that I've, I've given a few times and uh, we've kind of started building up a collection of those. So I know if you're looking for an easy win, the uh, kilo silver coins from the Perth Mint are, are always well received. I heard a few people use those as coasters. I don't know. That's what I, <laughs> that's well, what Well, you I, know, you, you always get that question about tarnishing. You don't want to get a coffee stain on one of those. Exactly. Uh, those I coasters. personally wouldn't, but <laughs> who am I to judge? Uh, Mark Yaxley, thank you so much for that holiday list and uh, really just great information come back soon okay with more good well, stuff thanks, Daniela. wishing you and your family a wonderful holiday season absolutely you as well and uh no black friday sales on gold ever right never i'm sure there are uh some black friday sales out there they might be ending at this point but uh, <laughs> there's always a deal to be had and that's something i did want to mention before we wrap when you're Help. speaking to your precious metal dealer be sure to ask them if they have any deals anything hanging around the back of the vault that they're looking to get rid of but don't <laughs> compromise reputation uh for a good deal uh, things hanging out in back of the vault. I'll take you it. never know. <laughs> hey, Mark Yaxley, Managing Director over at Strategic Wealth Preservation, SWP. Come back soon. Thank you so much. Thank you all for watching. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for premier content. You can't get anywhere else at DanielaComboni.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Stansberryinvestor.com.